I was asked to come out to do the day. Dan asked me to come to the day, so I can't even get a sick day. And plus, Blake's already had it, so he's got hands on it. Well, not very much at all, so... I didn't even know you were grounded. Oh my lord, that was awesome. Go up to the front and see if there's a quarter of service. Yeah. started here in just a second with our service. I wanted to welcome everybody. I know things have been a little bit different. We went from, uh, we kind of had to uh, reevaluate things as the weeks progressed. And uh, I want to say, uh, I want to say to those that are watching online, welcome. And uh, I know there are several people uh, that could not be here today because uh, the, the precautionary measures that's being taken. And that's okay. And uh, but, uh, for those that are here, we're hoping to enjoy a, a great Christmas service. Um, we've had several folks that have gotten sick, and uh, due to that, we've had to change some, some of the way that we've done our services. Uh, uh, mainly, our manger scene started to kind of dwindle down as the week went on, and then our nativity scene, at, rather, and then in order to maintain some, some, some safety and things like that, we decided to cut out the candlelight service. We are still going to do the communion service. If you uh, haven't already, make sure you go outside in this little uh, uh, little basket out there, and your communion wafer, as long as well as your cup, is there, all packaged together. Real quick tutorial: this thing, the wafer is on top. It's the part that looks like a white nickel. Okay, it's right there on top. It just peels back, and you pick that out. And then you just fold this one area back and peel it back like a little box of juice there. So um, so everything works out great there. Uh, other than that, we're going to get started with our service. Uh, I'm going to have a word of prayer. And uh, then we're going to just, uh, just, just sit back and enjoy the service. Uh, sing with us if you know the songs. And then as the service moves on, we'll make sure that uh, 
that everybody's taking care of, okay? Looking forward to what God's going to do. Let's bow our heads in prayer. Father, in Jesus' name, bless this time together. Lord, we love you. We thank you for everything you do for us. Thank you for this Christmas service. We pray with all of my heart that you would touch hearts today. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you. 
Amen. 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 I read this the other day. Thank you, Isaiah. I appreciate it. Um, John chapter number 1. I want to take your uh, attention there this morning, if you will. Uh, I want to share this passage of Scripture with you. I want to give you three principles that God showed me out of this. Uh, a few months ago, I preached out of Matthew 5 on uh, when God, uh, when uh, to let our lights shine. We'll, 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 we'll see that verse again in just a second. But to let our light shine in such a manner that when people see us, they don't glorify us, but they glorify the God in us and the God that's working through us. Now, in Matthew, in John chapter number 1, I'm going to read these portions of this piece of scripture, and I want you to see what God's uh, laid out in front of us in this. In, in verse number 1, it says, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. And the same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by Him. Y'all understand that concept. All things were made by Him. And without Him was not anything made that was made. In Him was, the li was life, and the life was the light of men. And the light, this is the verse that I want to really emphasize, and the light shineth in darkness, and the darkness comprehended it not. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. The same uh, came for a witness, to bear witness of the light, that all men through him might believe. He goes on to say, the same came for a witness, to bear witness of the light, that all men through him might believe. He was not that light but was sent to bear witness of that light. That, that was the true light, which lighteth every man that cometh into the world. He was in the world, and the world was made, made by him, and the world knew him not. He came unto his own, and his own received him not. But as many as received him, to him he gave power to become sons of God even to them that believe on his name, which were born not of, the blood, not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. This is one of the, my favorite verses that I've read this season. And the word was made flesh and dwelt among us. Here's my favorite part. And we beheld his glory. The glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. I want, to, I want to preach this subject the light, on the concept of this. This was our theme for Christmas today. It's called the light of the world. We ourselves contain no light, but because Jesus came, so did light. We live in a world that is ever growing more and dark, more and more uh, darker. We live in a we live in a society that gets. Uh, that, that is constantly becoming darker as the days move forward. It's a very hard concept to uh, have to endure. But as things grow darker, we need to understand that there are some truths that we need to, we need to embrace and also apply in our lives as things grow darker. Darkness, is, uh, darkness has always been here. Darkness, uh, but... I'm thankful that God is light and that through God things can radically change. And because God is light and because uh, of the abilities of light, uh, there is hope even in the midst of a world that is full of darkness. Uh, we have, it doesn't take rocket science to figure out that people are growing, people are becoming more and more evil. Things are becoming more and more evil. Uh, darkness seems to be getting darker and darker. The things that uh, the things that are good are now bad, and the things that are bad are now considered good. Even the most wicked of practices seem to be celebrated. And when somebody stands for something biblical or something that goes along with Christianity, it seems to be ridiculed and put down. But I want to give you three principles out of this, this concept of the light of the world. The fact that Jesus, in the beginning was the Word. 
But understand this, that the Word was made flesh, and it was dwelt among us, and we beheld its glory, both in glory and full of grace and truth. And he said, and he begins to say, and the light shineth in darkness. Aren't you thankful for that promise? Amen. Light does shine in darkness. There's three things I want to highlight this morning, and then I'll take my seat and we'll enjoy the rest of the service. But I want to give you these three things. The first thing I want to share with you is, number one, the light of the world. What is it? The first thing is this. It is a message of success. It is a message of success. So what do we have here? What is that? It's a message of hope. It's a message that brings hope into this world. It says that light shines in darkness. So what does that mean? It means this, that light, or darkness rather, has no power or, or control over light within itself. It says a message of success in the fact that, pay attention to this now, it says light shineth in darkness, but darkness, is what the Bible says, comprehendeth it not. So what does that mean? That word comprehended, a lot of times we think that that actually means to understand. But the reality of it is it may actually means that it has no control or power. Not that it just don't even understand it, in which darkness does not understand light, but at the same time, it has no control over it, or does it have power over it? So why is this a message, this, this concept of the light of the world? What does that teach us? It teaches us that there is hope in a world of darkness. It teaches us that there is victory that can be experienced. Light shines in darkness, and darkness has no power or control over light. What does that mean? Uh, that means this. It means that darkness cannot contain light. In other words, it cannot corral it. It cannot make its way where it tell it where to go or what it can do, uh, can do. Light has the ultimate power in which darkness cannot contain light. Aren't you thankful for that this morning? Aren't you thankful that darkness has, number two, no control over light? It has no say-so over what light can or cannot do. It has no control over it. Light goes where it, lit, where it will. And that's why he said he is the light of the world. And, uh, and even though the darkness comprehended it not, what it does it mean, it may not comprehend light, but also it cannot contain light. It cannot, con it, it cannot corral it or control it. Not only that, it cannot conquer it. Have you ever noticed that no amount of darkness can control or conquer even the smallest of light sources? It is a, so what does that tell me? Oh, it's getting dark, Brother Dan. Well, let your light shine. It has no darkness, has no control over the light. And what does that tell me, Brother Dan? It tells me that God's light is unconquerable by the works of darkness. It tells me that there is hope. And as long as the church still exists within this old, nasty, dark world, there is victory to be experienced. There is victory to be extended. There's victory to be enjoyed. We can have hope in a time where it gets darker and darker. Why? It's because no matter how dark it gets, light has no, or darkness has no victory over light. So what does that tell me? It's a message of success. Darkness comprehended not the light. But also it's a ministry of sharing. It's a ministry of sharing. In verses 6 through 8 he says the same for a witness. Uh, there was a man, or verse number 6 it says there was a man sent from God whose name was John. What was his purpose? His pur purpose was to bear witness. His purpose was to shine light on the light. So what does that mean? That there was a, that, that this light was not something that just should be experienced. It's something that should be extended. It's not just, here, the, the light, here's the concept right here. Light experience always should be light extended. I'm going to take you further with this in just a second. But at the same time, 
John said, it was said of John, he said he wasn't the light, but he came to bear witness of the light. He came to testify of that light. And that is what God has called us to do as believers. We are his ambassadors, we are his spokesmen. And in Matthew chapter 5, if you got that piece of scripture, Blake, in Matthew chapter 5 for me, if you can pull that up, I want to show it to you this morning in Matthew chapter 5, in verse number 14. Matthew chapter 5, verse number 14. He goes on to say this. He says, uh, he, he says, uh, I'm trying to find it. Let me get to it. Matthew chapter 5, verse number 14. He says, uh, Ye are the light of the world. A city that is set on a hill cannot be hid. Neither do men light a candle and put it under a bushel, but on a candlestick, that it giveth light to all that are in the house. Now here's what he says. Leave you with this. He says this. He says, Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. What does that tell me? Light is designed to shine. That's what that tells me. Light wasn't designed or created to be hidden or to be put underneath the bushel or to be put under uh, put under some hidden canopy. Light was designed and created and come into this world so it would shine. That's why it's here, is to shine. But not only is it designed to shine, it was also designed to be shared. Uh, not, uh, aren't you glad, aren't you thankful this morning that light is something that everybody can experience? When it, when it hits a room, it's something that just not one person gets, but everybody gets to experience a little bit of light. I'm glad I don't have to walk in darkness. I'm glad somebody shared it. And that's what John was there to do. It was the, the light of the world. He, it's a message of success saying that, hey, darkness has no power over me. But it also brings a ministry of sharing. What is that? The good news of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Let your light so shine that when people see you and how we live our lives, they glorify God in us. Now we move on to this. It's a miracle of salvation. It's a message of success. It brings us hope. It's a ministry of sharing. And that it should be light experienced always should be light extended. But there's a miracle of salvation. There's two things that I noticed right here. It says there's two, there's two portions of scripture right here. And a little bit of it bothers me. It says, now pay attention to this. It'll be all right. Listen to me. Listen to me. It says that he came into his own, but his own did not receive him. Isn't that sad? But, aren't you thankful for the buts in the Bible? Aren't you glad, aren't you thankful God butts in every now and then? He came unto his own, but his own, and his own would not receive him. But as many as received him, to them he gave power to become the sons of God. It's a miracle. The light of this world, it's a message of success and it brings us hope in the fact that light cannot be conquered by darkness, but rather light is what conquers darkness. That's why God tells us that we are more than conquerors in Christ Jesus. But it also, not only that, it's a ministry of sharing in the fact that light should never be hidden. It should be extended to one another. But it brings a miracle of salvation. Here's the cool thing. Light rejected is always redirected. Even though people may reject light, don't you see it get redirected somewhere else? And in this case, I'm awful glad it did. <laughs> somewhere on the lines, I'm going to have to high-five some Jews for rejecting Jesus. You know why? Why? Is because this old Gentile boy never would have got in had it not happened. But when he came, when Jesus came to his own, when he came to the Jewish people and his Jewish people would not accept him, guess what he did? Light got rejected, but it never, it never, it never devalued. 
It never dimmed. <laughs> My God, that's good. It never, it never lost its uh, value. It never lost its power. It never lost its ability. Light never did change. I mean, it was still light. Even though it got rejected, it didn't lose its potency in all of this. Do you know what it did? Light rejected all that became light redirected. And when it got redirected, it went into a Gentile world that saved the world. And now that's why we are living right now in this church on this day is because somewhere along the line, light that got rejected got redirected in our direction. Amen. Now, <laughs> light rejected becomes light redirected in another direction. But life that gets received always gets reflected. Life received is right. So what are you saying, Brother Dan? Here it is. Life wins. Life wins. It's ours. The victory is ours. Do you know what happened a little over 2,000 years ago? There was, a, there was a dark time. There was a dark time. The heavens were brass. There was no movement. There was no motion. There was no nothing. You know what was going on? Nothing. Heaven was still. Nothing was coming out. And then one day, the Lord broke through. And he broke through in a way in which the word became flesh. And it dwelt among us. Light broke through that darkness. And the light of the world shone in a way that set us set a standard that says, and all ye that labor and are heavy laden, come unto me and I'll give you rest. It set a standard and it told and it shared it waved a banner that said, Hey, I'm the light of the world. Come. Come. You can reject it. And that'll be all right. That's your choice. And it'll always get redirected. You can receive it and then start reflecting it. I've said this before. You know, the moon has no light in and of itself. But it has always been a reflection of a greater light. Amen. And that's what we as Christians are. Are you going to receive it and let it get redirected? Or reject it and let it get redirected? Or are you going to receive it and let it be a reflection? Because the one that receives it and then allows it to redirect and then allows it to reflect always gets to share in the impact that it has on somebody else. Always gets to behold the beauty of it. I am thankful today, that it wasn't just a babe in a manger that was born. It was the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. And I want to say something on a Christmas morning, on a Christmas service day. I want to say this for all that may be watching online, for all that is listening right here in this service right now, He has come as a babe in a manger. He has come as a lamb to the slaughter. But make no bones about it. When this light passes into this world again, it will no longer be as a babe in a manger. It will no longer be as a lamb in the slaughter. He will be coming back as King of kings, Lord of lords. He will rule. He will reign. And he will be who he says he was. And may I remind the world of darkness that is walking in its hedonistic ways that even though you may deny him, yet, 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 one day, one day, every knee will bow and every tongue will confess that Jesus Christ is the Lord of Lords and the King of Kings. He is the light of the world. 
share some passages of Scripture with you. It's this time, if you haven't already, uh, have a, uh, <laughs> a cup with a wafer. Uh, we have those in the back and uh, outside back there. We also have a box as well for the village. Make sure that you get those. Uh, for those that came in late, or uh, there, there is a uh, uh, there is a basket there that Brother Billy's got. He'll help you receive that. Um, like I said, we will be observing communion. You can go ahead and just peel the. And I know I've talked to many people that have used these things before. Uh, they can get interested. So if you sling a little juice every now and then, that'll be all right too. Uh, but. Uh, but at the same time, if you peel the top portion off, you get a wafer. The wafer looks about the size of a nickel, uh, just like this right here. Um, at Mount Pleasant, we practice what is called open communion. Um, and, uh, and so if you want to, you can go ahead and peel the wafer out. And as well, you can just kind of take your uh, thumb and your finger and put on the edge and bend that one portion back, and it'll open the juice up. As I read these two passages of Scripture, we're going to observe the Lord's Supper. And I want uh, to read them, and then I want to give you three things to dwell upon before we take of the Lord's Supper. Now, if you have children, it is your call as a parent or a grandparent whether they observe the Lord's Supper or not. And I'll explain that in just a second. I want to begin reading in 1 Corinthians chapter number 11. It says in verse number 23, it says, For I have received of the Lord that which I have also delivered unto you, that the Lord Jesus, the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, Take ye, this is my body, which is broken for you. This do in remembrance of me. See, we're trying to celebrate the body of Christ and the brokenness of Christ. We celebrate the birth of Christ. But at the same time, we have to remember that he was not born to live. He was born to die. And after the same manner, he took the cup. And when he had supped, he's saying, this, is the, this cup is the New Testament in my blood. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you uh, eat this bread and drink of this cup, you do show the Lord's death till he come. Wherefore, whosoever shall eat of this bread and drink of this cup of the Lord unworthily shall be guilty of the body and the blood of the Lord. But let a man examine himself. And so let him eat of that bread and drink of that cup. For he that eateth and drinketh unworthily eateth and drinketh damnation to himself not discerning the Lord's body. For this cause, many are weak, sickly among you, many sleep. Now, as we look at this verse, there's two things real quickly that I want to highlight. Before we take of this, uh, this, uh, this ordinance of the Lord, before we, before we do this, I want us to do two things. Number one, I think it's very important that we remember we remember why we're here. We remember what he has done. We remember that this is not just the celebration of a birth, but it's a celebration of the fact that the Lord knew that we could not provide righteousness, so that, but he provided a righteousness for us. He who knew no sin became sin. It wasn't just that we saw the birth of a Savior. It's the fact that this Savior went to a cross and died and bled for our sins. This bread is a broken body. It's a broken body. A body that had to be torn to pieces. It shows us the very depravity of our very sin nature within itself. And that is what it took so that we can have life and that we can have it more abundantly. And then there's the blood. Oh, the blood. It was righteous blood, but it was royal blood. It was righteous in the fact that it was untainted. 
it was royal and that it came from a higher, it came from a higher place. But it is this blood that gives us access back to God. So what do we need to do? We need to remember this. It's not just a piece, it's not just a little plastic cup of grape juice with a little piece of bread sitting there. But we're remembering the fact that, hey, we're participating with him in this. This is a moment of pure worship. But at the same time, when we remember, it has to bring a sense of repentance. I can't look at this and read this and think to myself, I'm really worthy of doing this. He says to let a man examine himself. Well, the Lord is really keen on that. Don't take of this unworthily. If you're lost, don't do this. Just close it up, put it in a little container, and set it there, we'll pick it up in a little while. But if you're lost, you can repent and get saved today. Be nothing greater for the Lord. There's no greater present than you giving Him your life. So, yes, we need to remember, but at the same time, we need to exercise repentance. We need to take some time and examine ourselves. If there's sin in our lives, we need to confess it. If there's an all against somebody, we need to get that right. If there's something we're holding on to that we've not confessed and gotten before the Lord, then that is an, this is an opportunity for you to do that. I want to take you to another portion of Scripture before we observe the Lord's Supper in Mark chapter number 14. Mark chapter number 14. I've got to share this with you. I've never read this portion of Scripture in the midst of one of the communion services that I've done, but I wanted to share it with you as the Lord brought me to this passage of Scripture. It says, as they did eat, in verse number 22 of Mark 14, it says, as they did eat, Jesus took bread and blessed. And break it. And he gave to them and said, take eat, this is my body. He took the cup, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, and they all drank of it. And he said unto them, this is my blood of the New Testament, which is shed for many. Verily I say unto you, I will drink no more of the fruit of this vine until the day that I drink it new in the kingdom of God. Now watch this. No way I stop. And when they had sung a hymn, they went out of the Mount of Olives. There's remembrance. There's repentance. But there's rejoicing. blood of his blood. Bless him, his flesh. He took the bread and when he had given thanks. Father, thank you for this opportunity to partake of the Lord's Supper, to remember you. Thank you for your mercy, your grace, your long-suffering and patience. Thank you for dying on the cross the likeness of somebody as sinful as we are. We love you in Jesus' name. Amen. And then he took the cup. And again, had given thanks. Let's pray. Father, thank you for your blood. As precious as it is. Lord, don't ever let us forget how wonderful truly are. It is your blood that provides the righteousness on our behalf. And we are forever grateful. In Jesus' name. Amen. It says that they sung a hymn. But at that time, will you please stand with us as we sing Mighty Cross.
uh, get your books out. We're going to say Enjoy the World and Open While You Faithful. It's on page 137 and 138, but it will also be up on the screen. Um, we're not going to have any music, so y'all are going to have to sing loud. Yeah. Okay. <laughs>
will meet, we'll have children's ministry, all of that will take place. We wanted to do this as a family. I thought it'd be good for kids to witness this and watch this take place. So if you would, let's bow our heads. If you need to give, the offering plates are back there on the back table. If you need to give, we'll receive an offering. Outside of that, we'll pray, Father, in Jesus' name, thank you for this day. Thank you for the church service that we've had. Thank you for these that have sung today. Thank you for the opportunity to engage in you. We love you. We thank you and praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you.